Alright guys, welcome back to the shop and I'm using my old camera today because I forgot to plug my good camera up. So anyway I thought I'd show you what I've been what's been going on. As you can see maybe this camera not the best but uh got some parts laid out here. Intake, valve covers, oil pan, oil pump. It's all coming off of this. This is the 350 out of my 85 Chevy Dooley that I replaced with that 383 and what I've decided to do is use this engine and put in uh, this project truck out here in place of that 305 it's probably pretty tired I've decided for the power and the money it'd be easier just to freshen this one up I'm hoping I can get by with just freshening it up I pulled the uh, oil pan off and looked at the at the uh, rods, and they are uh, they do appear to be factory original. And if this is a factory original motor, it's never been touched. It's got about less than seventy thousand miles on it. Uh, but the gaskets were hardened and they were leaky, and so it looks like crap. But anyway. And look in the oil pan. There's just very little sludge in there at all. So I'm, I'm optimistic this is going to be a pretty easy engine to rebuild. Just maybe even re ring it and uh, uh, probably put new rod and main, uh, new main and rod bearings in, new timing set because this one's got a little bit of slack. First step would be, of course, removing all the rockers. And I'm going to replace the cam and lifter set, so I'm not worried, really worried about the push rods going back exactly where they came from. I'm going to make sure they're all straight. Hopefully I won't have to buy none. This motor wasn't making that any noise or nothing. It just, uh, that 383 just uh, had a little more power. So I'm thinking I'll just take the heads and the block to the machine shop, get them vatted, get the heads worked, new seals in them, new cam bearings and uh, freeze plugs in the block, and I'll replace the cam and lifters, the timing set, and uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be it. So, I'm going to get started by removing the rocker assemblies, and uh, and then we'll get ready to pull the head off. I'll show you what it looks like when we get the head off. Alright guys, got the heads off. That was a little bit of a chore. Uh, if you ever take the head off one of these things, you know it's full of bolts. And you can still see where the gasket was. The gasket was good. Alright, so just looking at this head, I'm seeing a little bit of oil in these bottom two cylinders. And then these two cylinders here. And looking inside here, of course it has been sitting a while. This one's a little bit a little bit damp. And uh, of course I did have it upside down, taking the pan off, that may have contributed. There is virtually no no ridge in these whatsoever virtually none so that tells me it's pretty low miles just a little bit in that one just a little bit looking at these pistons you know just looking I don't see any kind of, of uh, marking on them that would suggest that they've ever been rebuilt and I could turn this damn floodlights on we can see a little better let's see what I can do with that all right so I turned some overheads on you can see it's pissing a little bit better that's just a piece of crud on there you notice all these pistons got a little notch in them and that notch points to the front of the engine on this side a little notch 
you know, just looking at the, I know y'all can't see good in these back cylinders, but I can, I can see cross hatches still on these sidewalls. You see them? Yeah, I think you can pick them up pretty good. So I don't think there's going to be any problem just honing these out and putting some rings. And uh, of course, I want to, like I said, I want to go ahead and replace the freeze plugs and cam bearings. But I'm going to replace the cam. But putting rings and bearings in here, fixing these heads, you know, just going through them, making sure they're good and flat and the valves are good. And uh, they don't, this valve right here, well that valve right there looks like it might be leaky. It don't look like it's sealing good. It'd be hard to tell from this angle, but I see a crack in there. That's an exhaust valve leaking right there. So definitely going to have to have a valve job. And so now we're going to turn it over. And we're going to go ahead and mark these bearings and caps, rod caps, and I'll show you how to do that. I've got a set of, I don't know what the hell you call them, taps, dies. Anyway, they're numbered and lettered. And what I want to do with them is over here, I think I'm going to have to go get my crank socket where I can turn this crank over I need to get some some fuel line anyway but you see that their factory got factory marks in some of these caps that says two this one says three we'll look over here at and said one or got a little notch in it and this one's got a little notch in it so these this one's got a two on it so these is not what you want. Where you want to mark them at is on the side right here. And you number them per cylinder. And on a Chevrolet, the number one cylinder is uh, the driver's side front. Now, it's like I was saying, the, the number one cylinder is the left bank front cylinder. So it would be easy to say that I know you can't see it, but this is number one, number two, this would be number three. So it's a good spot right here to go ahead and tap that in number three. Number four would be a good spot right here. Number five lined up good. Six is lined up good. Seven and eight. So then we'd turn it and get one and two up. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And uh, and I'll do it. All right. So this one is going to be number three. So I'll find the number three right here on this flat part. Not yet. And also, while I got this number three out, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and put on this bearing cap. This will be number one, number two, number three. I'll tell you which one it is, so. Let's get So as you can see, got number three and number four. 
Can you see that number four? That's pretty. That's the one I kind of messed up on. I can see it. Find my finger. I messed up on that one. So I'm gonna continue marking these on down the line. I should have went ahead and marked that number four. And when we we'll get done, I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Alright, kind of messed up a little bit on this one. I think I can read it though. And then on two, it kind of got a little much on the on the hickey, but I went back and got a good one there. And then of course I got all the rest of them before I turned it. And then I went and marked the cap two, three, four. And then of course these two here, there ain't no way to get them confused. All right, so next I'm going to be uh, pulling the cam off and out. And I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, oil filter adapter off so I don't lose it. And any little bolts in the, uh, in the blocks coming out. And, of course, i got to take this off. And then I'll be ready to start taking the pistons out. And I got I forgot to get some fuel line, so I don't know if I'll get to that today or not. But anyway, stay tuned for more. Alright guys, I got that number one piston out. I'm just looking it over. Uh it don't look that bad. Skirt wise looks pretty good. It ain't scratched too bad. All the rings are free and sliding. But the bearings come off in the on the crank so I don't want to tell such a damn such a shadow on it maybe you can see it's got a lot of wear you see that right in the middle it's down past the, the shiny it's dull in the middle it's tell me it had a lot of wire right in the middle this one not too bad it's got a lot of wire but it's more more around than, than concentrated in the middle now, I couldn't tell you which one come off of what but basically looking at the crank crank looks pretty good so what I'm gonna do and what I did bust these caps loose take my little rubber mallet and tap on that bolt to pop free and then I'll turn the crank where I get it lined up good and I normally have a little small wooden handled hammer it's at the other shop so I use my claw hammer on the soft end kind of tapped it out against the rod and got it out so I think tomorrow uh, I'm gonna finish up well, I need to go get my little hammer and I need to go get some fuel line to put on these bolts and keep scratching this crank in case it gets in a bad position. But I got the block, pretty much everything out, cams out, there's the cam. And it don't look too bad, but it's hard to tell if there's any wire on these cams. One or two loads look pretty warm. And of course with uh, these hydraulic uh, lifters, uh, flat tappet lifters, uh, the oil nowadays don't really come with the zinc in it that you need. So what I've heard people say, they recommend a STP oil treatment or a zinc additive. And uh, I suppose the STP oil treatment's got the zinc in it. So I'm gonna start using it because the zinc additive is pretty expensive. and can't really find none locally, I don't think. I hadn't really looked at AutoZone to see if they carry it, but it's just a matter of getting all these rods out, pistons out, and I'm going to leave the crank in the block, and I'm going to take it to the machine shop with the crank in the block. I did have to use my three-jaw puller to get that little timing gear off this crank, uh, but it came off pretty easy once I got that on there. So anyway guys, uh, next time you see this engine, it'll be back from the machine shop 
and hopefully ready to put back together. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.